Hey everyone, this is Turtle Lags here. I have been playing Lord of Dice Global ever since its official launch on January 29th. Uh, I find this game to be so much fun, has a lot of potential compared to a lot of the other mobile games I've been playing. Um, this is one of the few games where I feel like, despite the really low, um, you know, Gatchapons, uh, percentage probability of getting a, a good dicer, uh, they're very generous with the gems. And actually what makes this game, I think, more balanced and less, um, you know, pay to win is that um, there is a huge decrease in uh, returns the more money you spend. I think there's probably just like two good packages that you can buy. The monthly package for 30 days, where you can get like 12,000 gems total for like $10 and then I think there's a ranking uh, package where uh, for $30 you get like 18,000 gems. Aside from those two, all the other packages are a lot less uh, valuable and so um, I feel like in this game uh, even if you spend a lot of money you don't really get a lot of headway um, against uh, some of the other players that are out there. Now, um, just as you can see, um, or may notice, uh, I pre-recorded this. I actually talked during this entire video, but somehow my voice did not get recorded here. So I'm just voicing over right now. Uh, basically, I'm showing here that I divided the different dicers into six different categories, and I basically evaluated each dicer based on which natural five I felt was the best for each position, bomber, magic, sniper, etc, etc. Um, and I put a lot of time into this, basically took screenshots of um, all every single dicer among my list as well as my friends' lists. Um, okay, here we go. So I'm just going to talk about the top two dicers, top two or three dicers um, in each category. I'm going to start off with Bomber. Um, Sickle is um, actually on my in my lineup, um, and uh, she is incredibly useful. As some of you may be aware, Bombers are already very useful in you know giant boss battles because. If you position yourself right, you do so much damage. Um, but as you can see here, Sickle has two really good abilities. Um, the way I evaluated the dicers was um, I focused mainly on the movement ability and the dicer ability. Movement ability increases one dicer's attack by 40% if you are debuffed. This happens a lot, and it can randomly occur to, on, on any of the, the five dicers that are currently in your lineup at any given time. The show me the dice ability is what makes her really shine. Um, add one dice over your single dice. Um, this is going to mainly apply to your D10 dicers, uh, assuming that you're using just natural fours and fives, because all the D6 dicers and D4 dicers, they're double. Um, so imagine doubling your D10 dicer from one die to two die dice, um, that really can be a game changer um, against your opponent during dice battles. Alright, so I think I'm, I'm just waiting right now for the next um, dicer to appear. Um, one thing I should mention is that um, after losing bunches of games against many opponents, I've come to understand that winning dice battles is a key component to winning any game in a PvP match. So um, that was a huge um, piece of the criteria I used in evaluating all the natural fives. Now, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, in the interest of time, I only focus on the top two favorites of mine for each, um, each class, just because first time I recorded this, it ended up being like 30 minutes long, and I don't think... Um, I don't think you want to hear me for listen to me for 30 minutes. Um, if you are currently re rolling for a dicer, um, if you get sickle, I think in the Japanese and Korean tier lists, a sickle is top seventh, top seven, and um, I would definitely agree with that. Um, she was one of the two natural fives that I re rolled for. And even though I haven't limit broken her yet, um, she has been pulling her weight in pretty much all of my matches 
against different people. All right, looks like we're moving on to the next dicer. All right, so Kitsune. Gosh, I wish I had her in my uh, in my lineup. Um, so Kitsune, um, as some of you may know, she is considered rank one in the current Korean and Japanese um, tier list, and rightfully so. Just her first ability alone, whenever you use her movement ability, she adds 20% damage. Now, because I don't actually have her, so I don't know if this damage is applied during her attack or after her attack. I think it is during her attack, but I'm not entirely positive, and I don't know if it stacks. If someone has that information and can let me know in the comments below, that would be great. Her second ability, I think, is what makes her shine. Uh, she has the ability to destroy an enemy's dice that uh, is rolled six or higher. So basically, if your opponent gets lucky and rolls a high number, whether it's with a d10 or just gets a d6 to roll a six, you destroy that. So that can be a huge six, six plus damage swing right there. Or die roll swing. All right, so it looks like we're going to be moving on to the next category now. Uh, I'm just saying here that um, you know there's other um, dicers that. Uh... Oh, okay. So um, this might be one of my older recordings here. Okay, that's fine. We'll do this. So um, for Dana, uh, she is one of the event um, dicers. Um, basically. Uh, her first ability, the movement ability, allows her to boost one of your melee dicer's attack, so that's useful. But I think it's Crater that really makes her shine. Her ability to destroy one of the enemy's dice, just plain destroy it, makes her very, very useful. Um, Alright, and then moving on to uh, Ariok, um, he's one of the descent dicers that I think if you get enough of the pieces, like memory pieces or something, um, then you can acquire him. He's actually pretty good. Uh, so first ability is more of a defensive ability. I'm not in, I'm not real big on defensive abilities, but I'll I'll take it. Um, I would say that uh, the dicer ability is what makes him. Uh, one of the best, uh, increasing one of your lowest dice by four. Yeah, so basically you're pretty much guaranteed to increase your die roll by four. Um, uh, well, actually not guaranteed, I guess if you're using a nat four it's capped, but most of the time um, it'll increase your die by a certain amount. Now we're in the magic category. Now Alan, when I saw her two abilities I was just absolutely amazed that this dicer exists. I think her two abilities make her one of the best dicers in the game. I think she is underappreciated in the Korean and Japanese tier lists. I don't exactly know where she falls under those lists, but I'm pretty sure that she was like 10th or something like that. She's really good. Now I'm highlighting here um, I'm pulling up one of my runes because one of my runes actually combos with her first ability. And maybe you have this D4 rune as well. Um, yeah, so as you can see with this rune equipped, I have a 7% chance of poisoning my opponent. If I had her in my lineup, which, you know, I don't have Elam, but I, I wish I did, um, she would, her damage would increase by 30% if once I poison my opponent, so... Um, very useful. And the second dicer ability is absolutely insane. Reduces two of the enemy's d6 dice by four. By four! So, you know, the opponent, if they bring a d6 dicer into the dicer battle, you're going to decrease their die roll, cumulative die roll, by eight. Insane. Now, um, uh, Diana is one of the newest dicers, non-event, that was added. And she's actually pretty good. First ability is okay, dispelling one debuff, not a game breaker. But the second ability makes her um, makes her decent. So her ability to um, oh actually so um, actually the full charge is I think really good because she is one of only I think three or four dicers that currently have the ability to recover HP. 
uh, without the need to land on a potion. So um, that is noteworthy. Uh, now her second dicer ability, the Foxy Plot, reduces all enemies' dice rolled a four or higher by one. Now, when I think about it now, it's not as good as, say, like destroying a die because I think the maximum amount of die roll total you can decrease is six with that ability. Alright, so I have Serial in my lineup. Um, she's pretty good. Her first ability actually activates a lot. A lot. Um, yeah, and here I'm showing that I have her, or I used to have her in my lineup. I actually changed my lineup after doing this, um, uh, going through all the natural fives abilities. I think here in this recording I was looking for her, but um, I was recording on my computer, so I couldn't find her, and I was like, oh, I'll just keep going with the video. Uh, so anyway, so first ability triggers a lot, so if you don't want to be debuffed, um, you'll get your money's worth with this. Second ability burns the enemy for two turns when you win. Pretty good too for residual damage. Not as good if they have um, one of the um, other dicers, uh, which I'll get to in a moment, one of the melee, di melee dicers. Now, I just briefly mentioned Amphitrite, who is one of the few natural fours that I found to be significant. The reason I find her to actually be decent is because of her ability to, uh, to bind the opponent. Now, I haven't tested this enough to know if it keeps the opponent from moving altogether, or if it just reduces their movement by one. I think it's the former is preventing the opponent from moving for one turn. But um, it's the Dicer ability to crit that makes her really good. And so here right now I'm actually um, pulling up the crit and counter damage percentages for each de for each master. So as you can see, like right now I'm using Clara, she deals 150% attack damage when she crits. So, you know, with Amphitrite, you can guarantee a crit when you win, regardless of whether you win by nine or not. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's significant. All right, so here's Lilith. She's currently one of the events uh, dicers that you can win. Um, currently, as you can see here, we only have about four days left to acquire her before the event's over. Um, yeah, and the reason why I think she is top tier for melees is because she can destroy an enemy's D10 dice. And here I think I actually switch over to one of the D10 dicers. Now, as you probably may know already, um, the T10 dicers, they only have one die. So just by using um, Lilith in a dice battle, you basically take one of their dice D10 dicers out of the out of the dice match. Okay, and Dalo De is actually pretty good. Um, you can no longer acquire him. He was available during the Valentine's Day event. Um, so, um, but if you happen to have him, um, he's actually pretty good because um, he has that com comeback potential with the first ability. And the second ability makes your D10 dicers double dicers. And here I go back, once again, emphasizing that D10 dicers at the moment are only single dicers. So adding that extra die makes potentially up to 10 additional um, die number. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so now I'm on to Fenrir. Fenrir, he's in my lineup, and his first ability is the best in the game at the moment, hands down. And the reason for that is because you can recover 50% of the damage dealt as HP if you attack the enemy while debuffed. Now as you can see, I haven't even limit broken my Fenrir yet, and he has almost 2,000 attack. So just imagine recovering 1,000 HP when you are debuffed. That pretty much not only neutralizes um, the residual damage, but you can actually recover more than that, depending on 
if you're fully charged or if something else is going on. Now defense stance, I think that alone doesn't bring Fenrir up. I actually don't find defense stance incredibly useful because um, I find that when you lose a dice battle, you know, that's just, it can be a huge swing against you. So I prefer to use dicers that have dicer abilities that help you win dice battles. But anyways, this is a nice uh, safety measure in case things go wrong. Okay, so I think I'm going to be moving on because I realize how long this video is. Okay, so piercers, I'm just pointing out here that there aren't that many good piercers. There's only one that really stands out to me, and sh I, I want her so bad, but I don't have her yet. If you are re-rolling and you get a Sonya, and she's only not five you have, just keep the account, because um, other than her, the other piercers really don't shine that much. Uh, so both of her abilities are pretty good. First ability, deal 50% extra damage when you're 50% HP or lower. Huge comeback potential. And destroying one of the enemy's D10 dice. Once again, second ability, incredibly insane because you basically take one of the opponent's D10 dicers out of the dice match. Okay, I think I was trying to compare her with someone else, but I'm not sure if I ended up finding the dicer. Alright, so moving on to the magics. Okay, or no, not magics. Sorry, archers, or no, uh, snipers. So I was just pointing out here that the snipers, um, currently the snipers are not that good. I wouldn't consider any of the snipers top tier aside from Requiem. Uh, due to his dicer ability, increase two of your d10 dice by three, but that requires you to bring a d10 dicer along, two of them, unless you have an add extra dice ability, so he's kind of, lim kind of limiting. And I'm pointing out here that Ariel is one of the natural fours that I consider top tier because of her second ability, adding one dice over your single dice. So once again, making a d10 dicer on your team a double dicer. Yeah, so Ariel is considered one of the top nat fours in my book. And she's probably actually the best sniper in the game currently. Um, so, you know, that's noteworthy. You know, as you can see, all the other sniper um, dicers aren't that good. Okay, so finally, last but not least, we're going over the whirlwinds. I actually have Laura limit broken. I actually got three Loras, which I was kind of disappointed with, but uh, um, anyways, her first ability, um, you know, of the dozens of times I've used her, doesn't really proc that much for me, but it's a good, you know, buffer in case, you know, opponent uses a melee attack next turn. Her second ability is, Dicer ability is what makes her truly shine. You basically trade your lowest roll with your opponent's highest roll. Um, I can't begin to tell you how many times that um, this ability has saved me in a dice battle. Um, and I think she may be one of the few dicers that actually has that ability to switch like that. Okay, now Ariel is one of the three top nat fours in my book. Um, what makes her so great is her ability to destroy one of the enemy's d4 dice. Now anytime you can destroy a die that has that has huge potential. I think um, you could argue that Ariel's dicer ability is not that good because d4 dicers the opponent plays will be um, you can only destroy one of the two dies uh, dices. Alright so for a nut um, she is considered, I think, one of the top seven. I think she's actually third in um, the Korean and Japanese tier lists. The first ability, I think, over time, as more dicers are introduced, it will become more and more powerful and increase her value in the meta. But for right now, snipers aren't that good. So um, her chain attack won't be as impactful now as it will be in the future. 
What makes her top tier, assuming her first ability doesn't proc that much, is the second ability, um, reducing all of the enemy's dice that are rolled 6 or higher by 2. So, assuming your opponent gets real lucky, you can potentially decrease the opponent's total roll by up to, uh, I think, by up to 6. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's considered... Um, I guess, I guess that's that's pretty good, yeah. Alright, so I think that wraps it up. Hope you found this video informative. I am praying to God that my voiceover works because I just filmed for 20 minutes, or voiced over for 20 minutes. So I take care. Please like this video and give your thoughts regarding if you think I missed anything. Take care. Bye-bye.